All right, travelers, I come over here to the Gunnisonville Cemetery here and figured I'd show you around this and actually visit my uncle's gravesite. And I'll be honest, I cannot actually remember where he's buried at. It's been a long time since I've been out here. So I figured we'll walk around and I'll eventually find him. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that one. You got well, like the newer Camaro sketched on it. This guy died in 19, uh, 2014. He was born in 1948. Loving son, father, and grandfather. Huh. I've never seen one with the newer cars on it. It's interesting. They showed that one with the newer car on it, but this is the one I've seen before. Old 50 Chevy. Look at that. Old uh, bridge. Now you can see, you know, it's not just the school that's over that way. It's next to, right next to a cornfield. All these people buried next to a cornfield. Oh, this one's cool. Look at this. Brandon Wayne Buttoning. Look at He's in a cowboy outfit. That's deer. Born in 1998. Died in 2015. He was young. I wonder what he died of. Oh, look at this. He must have done chewing tobacco. Who knows? It could have been cancer. Somebody left a little can of chewing tobacco next to his grave. And right next to it, we got this woman's figure on there. 1979 to 1996. She's pretty. I like how they got these little things next to the tombstones so the, to the veterans. And this guy here was a veteran. This person here was a veteran. Right there. Oh, check this one out. Got the dogs hatched down there. Must have been there actually their dogs. A bit close in there. Look at that. One's a collie. I don't know, it's like a German Shepherd, maybe. It's in the front of a pine tree. Oh, this one's pretty. Look at this. That's a deer right there. Kind of like that other one. That cowboy deer. That's pretty. Oh, I like the sign. My heart goes with you wherever you are. I'd like to know the story behind this one. Schneider. This guy's name is Schneider. And his family, I guess his wife too. Right there. And right here, underneath this, looks like, like a bench right here. Look, you have Mickey Mouse. You got Mickey Mouse right there. Oh, I wonder what that's all about. Maybe his nickname was Mickey or something? I don't know. That's cool. And this one kind of reminds me of my uncle's tombstone, but I think his was black and he had a motorcycle etched on his tombstone. So he was a biker. This is interesting. This person must have been a bowler or something. Or a bowling pin. Sitting next to his tombstone. That's interesting. Here's another Randall out here that I didn't know. Set could be distant relative for We find Randalls all over this area so far. Now this one's interesting. Kind of reminds you of the ones from Harvardson Cemetery. And this guy was a veteran. 
U.S. Army veteran James E. Weston, Jan January 15, 1939 to 2011. Look at this thing, you got a little Bible next to his grave. I like that. Reminds you of Arlington, like I said. This one's neat. This one must. This guy must have been a farmer, Andrews. And this guy and his wife, I guess. And then we got, we got this little dog, a little black lab. Sitting here, barn, farmhouse. They could have been farmers. This one's interesting. An R.J. Uh, Martin. SP-4 U.S. Army Vietnam. It makes me wonder if he's actually buried there or if this is just a memorial to him. Oh, actually, he, yes, this is his actual grave. He died in 2006. Oh, that's an interesting story. Like I said, you know, cemeteries always fascinated me. But unfortunately, I don't want to be buried in the cemetery because I feel, you know, you get buried, for one, I can't afford it. There's another one with a motorcycle. I'm a gown His name, his last name is Randall. But, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be buried. It's, for one, I can't afford it. It's too expensive to be buried anymore. I'm planning on being cremated and having my ashes scattered, you know, somewhere. Even to have your ashes buried, it's expensive. I mean, they make a killing off from people dying, you know. But it always, the cemetery's always fascinated me. It's part of history, that's how I'm into it. I love history, so I, I think that's part of it. You know, you wonder people, the people's history of these, uh, you know, cemeteries. And unfortunately, it's getting to the point where not very many people are going to be buried anymore. Going to be cremated because it's so expensive. I'll check this one out. Somebody has left a tennis ball and a golf ball. They must, this person must have played both. There's a piano. Maybe they play the piano too. Organ. Hmm. Now this one's interesting. Andrew Wayne Smith. This little kid looks like died. He was only eight years old when he died. But I mean that's cool as it is on the front, but on the back. This tombstone. Oh, it's like a kid actually wrote his name, maybe that's his signature, Andrew, son, brother, hero, friend, a good soldier of Jesus Christ, 2nd Timothy 2.3, and then there's like a music notes, huh, that's interesting, like I said, that's like uh, possibly his signature, Another one of those ones that reminds you of Arlington Cemetery. Boy W. Ridgeland. S1 U.S. Navy, World War II. He died in 87. Born in 1911. Wow, he lived a long time. Hmm, this one's interesting. It's possibly their house these people lived in. It's like a roundhouse. Look at that. American flag flying out front. Huh. Oh wow, here on that other side of that tombstone, at this angle, that one I showed you, that roundhouse. DeWitt Township's first police chief, 1965 to 1973. Right there. This one's kind of cool. Looks like a hunter with a bow and arrow. Oh, look, there must have been somebody's father there. 
I left this painted rock. You're my somebody. Huh. See, this is another reason why I don't want to be buried. So I, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, you pay all this money, you get buried out here, yeah. You know. But then, who comes to visit you, you know? I mean, maybe for the first couple years, people visit you, but then you're just laying there and people forget about you. I mean, it's, I'll admit it. It's been years since I've come out to my uncle's grave and I haven't forgotten where he's buried. You know, nah, I don't want that to happen. I mean, I, I said, I'm having my ashes scattered at Silver Lake Sand Dunes. And that way, when my family goes up there, they can sit there and remember me up there. Oh, look at this one. This must have been a child that died, died 26, 2001. Look, they have a dinosaur on the tombstone. Safe in heaven. Cole I.F. Mumbert. That's cool. Alright folks, there he is. Big Glenn Randall. 1941 to 1991. That was my uncle. See, like I said, there's a motorcycle on there. See, he was a biker. You know, he always had motorcycles, fixed up motorcycles. You know, he had ran his own little shop out of his own house where he'd fix up people, uh, work on people's bikes and stuff. He'd go all over. I mean, I said he was a true blue biker. I mean, uh, he used to, when we he died, we went through his house and we found all kinds of pictures of naked women on the back of his motorcycle and, and all that, you know. Hey, that that's what he was and unfortunately he died uh, of cirrhosis of the liver because he was a big-time drinker and he drank a lot and that that taught me a lesson I mean I'm a hemophiliac I'm not supposed to drink anyway but I got into drinking for a while after what I saw what happened to him yeah that sobered me up quick I didn't want to touch a drop for a while and I said his name was Big Glenn and, and, and he, trust me, he lived up to his name. He was a big guy. I mean, and he had a little Cocker Spaniel, Molly, and she, that was his sidekick. And he actually had a sidecar for his motorcycle, and every time he fired up the motorcycle, Molly knew it was time to go for a ride. She'd hop into that sidecar, and they'd go for a ride. Yep. Been a long time, Uncle Glenn. Been a long time. And you see that name, Randall. That's my mom's, that was my mom's brother. He was, he was my mom's oldest brother. Yep. My mom is the only one left of their siblings because my other uncle, he died what, two years ago, I think, and Thanksgiving. He's buried out in Portland, out there. Yeah, I'll never forget his funeral either, you know. I'll never forget it. Says that we actually he had a buddy that showed up to his funeral on his Harley, and they actually had him lead the hearse all the way to the cemetery. Yep, that was beautiful. The guy was all in leather. Yeah, that was very touching. This one's neat. Look at this. An old pickup truck. Actually got color on this one too. Look at that. Log cabin. Deer over here. Got the prayer hands. 
Wow. I've never seen one like that. All colored like that. I like this one. Guys out fishing. Catching a bass. Hmm. I wonder what the story behind this one is. On this side, beside Judith here, she has an elephant. Maybe she's a fan of elephants. And then on Stephen's side, he has a truck with a camper on it. Hmm. That's interesting. This one's neat. Got the old, old car right there. This lady, right to her, she's got her kitty cats. Hmm. I'll check this one out. This is an old car. Is that a dog in front of some of the car? Hey, see this over here? I'm not gonna lie. That scared me. You see that got that little windmill thing here? This little pinwheel thing sitting here? I was sitting here, I'm the only one in this cemetery right now. And I'm walking along, and all of a sudden, this that wind picked that thing up and started spinning it. It scared the crap out of me. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> like I said, I'm the only one out here. And you, know, you hear noise like that, it was like, it was a weird noise. Look at that, it's got teddy bears on it. Whew. Yeah, that thing scared me. <laughs> Wow, check this one out. Got an actual buck on it. It says, We hear you in the winds. We see you in the woods. We hold you in our hearts. We love you. We miss you. This must be a newer thing or something. Look at There's another one of this with color on it. It's got a log cabin. Pontoon boat on the water. Green grass. Color on that. Trees all colored. Huh. Said, I've never seen tombstones with actually color in their carvings. It must be a newer thing or something. Uh, here's one that's cool. Frederick Henry North. Uh, dedicated firefighter. Born in 61 and died in 86. See that symbol there? Firefighter symbol. Wow. See, this is a beautiful little cemetery. Look at this. I mean, like I said, you got the cornfields out here like that. You know, and like I said, this is just outside that school, the Gunnisonville School I was showing you earlier. Oh, look at this one. Loving father, big kid, broke, doo-doos, my guy. It's kind of unusual. Oh, look at that on the other side. <laughs> Got a semi-truck. October 10th, 1973 to 2009. Loving husband, son, and best friend. Hmm. Oh, this one's interesting. I don't know. It's not a tombstone, I don't think. It's a big old rock out in the middle of all these tombstones. It's a big old rock. No name or anything on it. Boy, check out this tree that's in here. That is a big tree. Kind of spooky, too. Look at that. Kind of looks spooky there. Oh, right here, look. I'm not gonna lie. You look all right, right there. Doesn't that almost look like a s skull coming out of there? You can almost see the eye. Ooh, that's kind of creepy. The cemeteries don't really creep me out, but I will admit one thing. See right over there? There's a house right over there next door to this. I could not do that. I've watched Night of the Living Dead <laughs> way too often. 
And I ain't gonna say it's actually gonna happen, but I mean, you know, if it did, knock, 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 brains. <laughs> this is how uh, got a little toy car up here and a little car race car. Maybe grandson or son put it there. That's cool. Now, so far, since I've been in here, this is the oldest grave I found out here. This one had all this like grass clippings all over the side of it. I scooted it off there, you can see. They died in 1948, looks like. Or is that 18? I don't think it's 48. They died in 48. You can see, that's an old stone. I'm starting to get so many older graves. This one's in 55. These people died in 55. This one looks like it's a homemade tombstone. A little bit. See it? You know, it's like they poured concrete. Then Mert Scott, 1986. Or 1886. Then 1949. So that looks. It just kind of looks old school writing and stuff. Not professional like some of these other ones. Here's some real old ones here. 1848 to 1924, Sarah J. And then Marion D, 1986 to 1937. Starting to get some of the older graves. Here's the oldest one so far. Maggie, wife of Lailet Barthol. Died in 1918. Yeah, here's some, another real old one. 1853 to 19, the 18 or 16. Faded. Age 56, possibly. I almost can't even read the name. William Magon Magoner and Magoni. Check this one out. You guys got the rose carved, carved in there. Look at that. For uh, Laurel Eve Eveline Miller. That's her last name. Wow, that's beautiful. Oh, we got this section right here. This uh, whole family that is buried here. And you know, it's got the same kind of tombstones. Zimmerman. So that one's born, died in 2013. 1930, 1933, 1907, 1972, oh no, died in 72, died in 1978 and 1942. So this must be the family plot right here. They all got the same identical tombstones. One name must be famous around here, big time around here is Cook Family. I notice a lot of graves over around here have the Cook name on it. So there must be a big uh, heritage of Cooks around here. Here we have one. Can't even read the year they died or the actual name. Was it? Ethel, George, oh, I can't read that other one, it's kind of a, it died, died in age, age 22 years. Wow, sad I don't see a actual death date. It's, it's all worn off. 
It's an old one. I don't know, that could be it right there. But it's so worn. For 22 years, that's awful young. Now, here we have Gunningham. And I wonder if they could be somewhat of the people that, you know, really to the people that founded this area. They were called Gunningsonville. Is it Gunning? Could be. Oh, this is sad. I hope somebody didn't do that, you know. Or whatever this tombstone this is. So somebody knocked it over. I don't understand why people do stuff like that. I'll check this one out. Let's see. Now, if I remember right, isn't that the sign of the Freemasons? We got some kind of star here. I don't know what that one means. O E S. But yeah, I think that's the Freemason sign right there. The guy must have been a Freemason. See, now I believe this area here is the real old cemetery they talk about because there's the school right there. And there's that church. These ones actually look pretty old. This tombstone's kind of interesting. 1879, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with ex exceeding great joy. Star on it. On the other side here. What is it? Minerva J. Bauer. Born June 20, no, June 26. 1872 died November 3rd 1878 wow that's an old one sister thou wasn't mild and lovely gentle as the summer breeze pleasant as the air of evening when it floats among the trees I think they might have replaced this one you can see that I think this was the original tombstone Looks like it's been damaged. It looks like they may be made a new one. On the other side, I loved one's bower. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. It's on the other side here. Oscar D. Bauer, born September 6, 1874, died October 27, 1878. Dear's brother, thou has, has, hasn't left us. Here they loss we dead, deeply feel. But it's God that hath birth, uh, birthed us. We can all our sours heal. This one tombstones look like they must have been buried under the ground and they found them. You see how they look like they excavated around here. Possibly pulled these tombstones back up. Obviously they're so old you can't read them. Hey, here's a real old one here. Is it Jacob S. Crotchley? Died in 18... 86. So, yeah, these are the real old ones here. You can barely read them. Yeah, it looks to me like they've been doing some work here to fix these tombstones. You know, so you can read them and stuff. Like this one says Mabel on it. You can see where they've done some work around here. This one here, look at this one broke. And they fixed it so it just kind of sits up there. This is a big one here. More. That's another name I've noticed around this cemetery a lot. I can't, really can't read that one. Except for the more part. 
Well, this one's neat. This is the old one. But you can see that they actually did a carving in it. Looks like somebody reaching for God's hand, possibly. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So here's some other ones that looks like they're doing some stuff to. This one broke here. That's a on that side. Eva Elizabeth. Age 60 years. Died in 1865. I'll check this one out. This one's got a boat anchor on it. This guy was a sailor. Wow. Chris, Chrisman, K Bus. Yeah, I really can't read that one. Yeah, these ones, oh yeah, you see how they repaired it. You got the metal holding it up. Here's another tombstone. That's a big tombstone. I don't know who could knock that off. Here's the tombstone. It looks like it used to set up here. That was some strong people, but you know that's disgraceful. I don't want to see why people do stuff like that. This one looks like it's about to fall over too. Even their caretakers uh, uh, shed here it's pretty old looking I mean, look at that look at the look at the handles on the door here wow this is the caretakers shed that is pretty old Check out this tombstone. This is one interesting. Charles C. Anderson Jr. He died in 1999. See the guitar on there? But the interesting thing is, besides the name, that's my last name, is on the other side here. He was a police officer, Deputy Sheriff, Clinton County, Michigan. Chief Tuber. DeWitt City Police. That's awesome. Hmm, you never know. Could be distant relative. But I have a, I'm an Anderson around here. I know I've been finding a lot of Randalls, but there's also a lot of Andersons around here. Now this is an unusual tombstone. There's no name on it. I mean, it's old. But it almost looks like a mushroom. It's shaped like a mushroom. I don't see no name on it. This one's a little interesting. It's a diamond shape. Cure. Not sure what year they died. It's just kind of faded. What is it? 83? 1983? 1883, that is. There's another one that's been carved pretty good. It looks like a hand reaching up for the Bible. It says, Farewell, our mother. And on this, that's the same one on this side. Look. Got the Holy Bible. It says farewell, our father. And they don't say the actual name, I don't think. Let's see what the other side says. Oh yeah, here's the other side. I actually can't read it though. And this one is George Smith. 
Oh, Mary. George Smith died 19, uh, 1829. Looks like. Oh, now that one's old. See, they say that schoolhouse has been there. And the cemetery was built around the same time. It's kind of be it had to be creepy for the kids kids to come to school and knowing there's a graveyard right next door. Look at that. <laughs> oh now this one's beautiful. Looks like this looks like it's been put here, maybe to replace a tombstone that was here. More. Miss Oral G. Moore. Wife of Harrison Moore, only daughter of Lemon and Mrs. West died H uh, died uh, December 24th, 1875, aged 32 years. Oh, she was young. Look at this. I got a dove up here. Wow, now that's beautiful. Oh, look, a piece of it broke off right there. That is beautiful. That's uh, that's metal too. That's metal. That's not uh, concrete or uh, porcelain like the others. She was gone to heaven before us, but she turns and waves her hand, pointing to the glorious or us in that happy spirit land. Wow. Flowers. That's beautiful. It says it's made out of metal. That cast iron, actually. It's made out of cast iron. Wow. Oh, look at the carvings on this one. This one looks like it's a willow tree. Eloise Gunnitzman. Died in 1881. Can't read the. Yeah. This one I can't even read. This one's also got a willow tree. Oh, check this one out. It's supposed to be the gates of heaven. Right there. I see what I mean about the school though see I'm standing in front of this one turn around there's the school can you imagine a kindergartner coming to school and knows there's a graveyard right here <laughs> right, here's another one look at this Samuel Ometh 1882 yeah these are the real old ones over here it's just weird that, you know, it's right next to a school. Well, I guess it was a church, too, at one time. And, now of course, there's the church across the street. But still, it's just, for a school, that'd be kind of creepy. Here's another one that looks like it's cast iron. Look at that. It's got a little hand there. It's like almost like a pyramid. Some flowers in it. Sandra Heth died 1879. Age 88 years old. Eight moss five days. I don't know what that means. Yeah, this looks like it's made out of cast iron too. Yeah, it's cast iron. Gone, but not forgotten. Look at that. 
Got a little dove there. Only half. More not for me. 1879. And here we got a little, little angel poking out. Oh. Oh, and then you got angel up here praying. On this side, I don't know, it looks like wheat. Now here's a tombstone I always wanted to know. I, you see the roads right there. That's the road that comes by, kind of down the road from where I live. And I passed this many times, and I seen this tombstone with this dog on it. And I always wonder what the story of that dog is. Let's see, there's a dog. There's a stump next to him. I can't even read. This must be an old. Stone. I don't even see. Wait a minute. There we go. Heller. This old dog. Maybe that was his favorite dog or something and had somebody carve this. I don't know. It's interesting. I see this one from the road all the time. And I always wondered what the story behind it is. It almost looks like it's a bulldog. Look at that, even, I hate to say it this way, he even did his private parts. See? Oh my god. Look, even in the back. <laughs> That, that's that's some uh, carving there. Whoever did that.